one's actually pretty interesting. This is not local news. This is one is uh, by the Columbus Telegram. So I'm assuming it's in Columbus, Ohio. And this is actually a child with his supposed service dog here. I don't know why there would be a kid with an Australian uh, cattle dog as a service dog. That just seems like a really difficult and poor decision, but you never know, right? Because they tend to be really, cattle dogs tend to be really high energy dogs. And, you know, unless your kid is really on top of their training, like, you know, I don't see how it could help you in public at all. Maybe at your home, but I would imagine it might be hard to get the training uh, good and consistent out in public, unless you're like really boarding training your dog with somebody who knows what they're doing. Okay, so the kid's name is Jaden. Poses for a photo with his dog, Jack. Jack and Jaden, that's cute. On Friday at his home in Columbus. The city of Columbus and the Svitak, oh gosh, I'm butchering that. I know I'm butchering that family have come to a resolution on the city ordinance that limits the number of household dogs. So I actually, I looked at this one a little bit earlier. Normally I don't look at any of the stories before I come and talk to them with you guys to keep them new and fresh. But I looked at this one a little bit earlier and apparently there's a limit to four dogs. I think it's a limit of four dogs um, in this particular city. And the issue is they've gone over that limit. And that's the dog that's over the limit, but it is a service dog. So that's why then this is an interesting article. So let's finish reading the entire thing. As reported first last week on the Telegram, oh, they reported it first, oh boy. Katarina Svitak was sent a letter by the Columbus Police Department informing her that she had 10 days in which to remove one of the family's dogs from the household or face a citation and appearance in court. Columbus Mayor Jim Bulky, 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 I think, I don't know, you, listen, <laughs> you can bash me in the comments if you want, but I'm doing my best here, reached out to the Telegram on Tuesday afternoon, indicating that a letter is being drawn up and that will allow the tax to maintain their four dogs with the understanding that once one passes away, it cannot be replaced. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that's good. So um, it looks like it was a little bit of an issue for a while, but it they came to a quick resol resolution. The city of Columbus limits the number of dogs in the home to three. Okay, not four, but three. The Svitax, <laughs> maybe, maybe the S is silent. Maybe it's Vitax. I don't know. Maybe the V is silent. I, I have no idea on this matter. They had three when they acquired Jack, the Australian cattle dog, for their oldest son, Jaden. Jaden was prescribed a service animal by his doctor nearly two years ago to help sense and lessen his anxiety attacks. So that kind of has me wondering if it's actually an emotional support animal because those are usually prescribed by doctors. Normally a service animal is something you talk to your doctor about but they don't actually need to provide an actual prescription. I'm sure they could provide a prescription, but it's not needed. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if the news story got this right at all. So, but even then, like it, they're allowed housing through um, housing at the HOA to have emotional support animals either way. So, I mean, in the end, it doesn't affect the outcome, but I'm just kind of wondering about, you know, if these guys got it right or not. So the Svitax, Vitax, oh my gosh, it's messing me up. I'm just going to skip it. Said they originally checked with animal control in the spring of 2018 and were informed that a service animal would not violate the city ordinance because of its status. Okay. The people went ahead and acquired Jack, had him trained and registered and made him a member of the family. So just to let you guys know, um, and I, I cover this every single week, but every single week I have new people on my live stream, so I have to be really repetitive with this stuff. Service dogs do not have a registry nationally, okay? Anything that tells you you need to register it online is just a scam trying to scam you out of your money, okay? There is no national service dog registry. Now, California has a voluntary registry for their dogs, but it's not required for the state, okay? It is voluntary. So, and these guys are not in, in um, California. Now that would be interesting though. I don't know if any other states have rolled out with a voluntary program for service dogs. So 
that would be interesting. Listen, if you guys are in Columbus, let me know because I would like to know these things. And basically what you guys have to do is every single state's different, right? And you have to look up your own laws regarding service dogs, emotional support animals. And, you know, it, it's kind of an individual endeavor on that. So, I mean, if, if you have personal experience, I would love to hear it. But this past December, the police responded to a noise complaint for barking and exceeding the dog limit from one of the sitback's neighbors. Okay. The original animal control officer who advised the family 18 months earlier had resigned his post and moved to Omaha. Well, that's unfortunate. After two interactions, the family was informed it was out of compliance. Well, that's really unfortunate. Katarina argued that since Jack is a registered service animal under the law, he's considered a medical device. Again, you don't need this registered BS, okay? Um, yes, they are considered medical devices legally, but they it's not because that it's registered, all right? It's not because it's registered. Uh, and as a, and an employee, oh, he's an employee. Okay, the dog's a medical device and an employee. Listen, I've never heard that before. I don't know where she got the employee part, but definitely dogs are legally considered medical devices and cannot be counted as a dog. When the telegram reached out to the Nebraska Equal Opportunity Commission, a housing investigator was the commission, with the commission agreed with that opinion. Good, <laughs> excellent, doing your jobs. We are in the process of drawing up a letter that will outline her unique situation having the four animals. When one of the animals passes, it will not be replaced. Also good, because, you know, obeying your local laws is a good thing too. Leash laws, guys, leash laws. Um, this would bring her into compliance with the city ordinance. Bulkley wrote in an email to the telegram, she will sign the letter and a resolution will go before the city council on the exemption to city ordinance. Okay, cool. So that was awesome. That was really good. Love that. Oh, wow. We've got more people. Hi, Christina. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Julia. Ingrid says, oh good, I'm glad the city of Columbus is helping out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad they're being understanding. It could be a service dog one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't really affect the outcome, whether it's a service dog or an ESA. And some service dog program, what dogs do registries as well. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. <laughs> Hi, Anne, how are you? Nice to see you in here. Hi, Liz. Perhaps they could start saying legitimate service animal instead of registered or certified on signs and in news, sto news stories. I see some signs say task train and explain that ESAs aren't the same. You see signs that say task train. So like on the front of a, a business, you will see task trained like service dogs or, or are the signs on the dogs themselves? Cause I'm not sure which mean, but like, I see what you're saying because I wouldn't say, and I wouldn't put on the front of the business legitimate, right? Because I mean, then you're implying other people are illegitimate, right? Instead, you know, maybe fully trained service animals would be allowed. Um, I know there are some businesses and some laws with other states where they won't even allow service dogs in training into like say places that have food. Okay, which I you mean, okay, that's fine. I mean, that makes sense because the dog is still in training. And there are other places you can practice around food that is still dog friendly. You can go outside on benches, like outside of a Starbucks, order some food, be around other people. And there, there are still opportunities out there for you. You just have to get a little bit creative. Ingrid says, that's awesome if they say task trained. Yeah, but not everybody, again, like already because the general public is so ill-informed about service dogs in general, I don't think adding on the words task training is gonna help at all. I think fully trained still makes more sense. It's easier for the general populace to understand. So, I mean, in, in, I mean, if you can keep thinking if, you know, if that's better, but you know, I think first and foremost, people just kind of need to get some basic education under the belt before you say something like as advanced. I know it doesn't seem advanced to you guys, but it's advanced to the general populace as task training because they don't understand what that is. <laughs> 